Welcome back to our channel, in today's video, we're diving into the fascinating world of serotyping microorganisms. Serotyping is a crucial technique used by microbiologists to classify and identify different strains of bacteria and viruses based on their specific surface antigens. So, let's get started and explore the incredible world of serotyping microorganisms. Before we jump into the details of serotyping, let's quickly review following keywords. What are antigens? Antigens are unique molecules found on the surface of microorganisms, bacteria or virus, that stimulate an immune response in our bodies. These antigens can vary from one strain to another, leading to different serotypes. What is strain? A strain refers to a genetically distinct variant or subtype of a microorganism within a species. It represents a specific lineage or population of microorganisms that may differ in various characteristics, such as genetic makeup, morphology, virulence factors, or drug resistance. Strains can arise through genetic mutations, recombination, or the acquisition of foreign genetic material. The term, strain, is commonly used for bacteria, viruses, and other microorganisms. What is serotype? A serotype, on the other hand, refers to a distinct variation or subtype of a microorganism based on specific surface antigens. Serotyping is a method of classification that categorizes microorganisms into different serotypes based on variations in these surface antigens, such as proteins or carbohydrates. Serotypes are identified through serological techniques, where specific antibodies are used to detect and differentiate the antigens present on the surface of microorganisms. Serotypes are often denoted by numbers, letters, or alphanumeric codes. What is serotyping? Serotyping is a laboratory technique used to classify and identify microorganisms, typically bacteria or viruses, into distinct serotypes based on their specific surface antigens. These antigens are usually proteins or carbohydrates located on the outer surface of the microorganism and can vary between different strains or subtypes. The serotyping process involves exposing the microorganism to specific antibodies or other detection methods that can recognize and bind to the surface antigens. By observing the interactions between the antibodies and the microorganism, scientists can determine the serotype of the strain being tested. How Bacterial Serotyping is Done Bacterial serotyping involves several techniques for identifying and classifying bacteria into different serotypes based on their specific surface antigens. Here are some commonly used methods for bacterial serotyping. Slide agglutination. This method involves mixing the bacterial sample with specific antibodies known as antisera on a glass slide. If the antibodies recognize and bind to the surface antigens of the bacteria, visible clumping or agglutination occurs, indicating a positive reaction. This can be observed under a microscope or with the naked eye. Tube agglutination. Similar to slide agglutination, this method is performed in test tubes. The bacterial sample and antibodies are mixed in a test tube, and agglutination is observed by the visible clumping of bacteria. Direct ELISA Specific antibodies against the bacterial surface antigens are coated onto a microplate. The bacterial sample is added, and if the antigens are present, they bind to the antibodies. Detection is achieved by adding an enzyme-linked secondary antibody that produces a color change or fluorescence when it reacts with the antigen-antibody complex. Indirect ELISA this method uses a primary antibody that recognizes the bacterial surface antigens. After incubation with the bacterial sample, a secondary enzyme-linked antibody is added to detect the presence of the primary antibody bound to the antigens. Polymerase chain reaction PCR. PCR-based serotyping involves amplifying specific genes or DNA regions associated with the surface antigens of the target bacteria. Primers specific to the serotype of interest are used to amplify the DNA. The amplified DNA can then be analyzed through various methods, such as gel electrophoresis or DNA sequencing, to determine the serotype based on the presence or absence of specific genetic markers. It's important to note that the specific serotyping method used can vary depending on the bacterial species and the antigens being targeted. Different bacteria may have unique serotyping techniques specific to their surface antigens. Additionally, Molecular methods like PCR are increasingly being used to complement or replace traditional serotyping methods, as they offer higher specificity and the ability to identify new or emerging serotypes. In summary, bacterial serotyping plays a crucial role in epidemiological studies, outbreak investigations, vaccine development, and surveillance, providing valuable information about bacterial strains and their associated characteristics. How Viral Serotyping is Done 
Viral serotyping involves various techniques for identifying and classifying viruses into different serotypes based on their specific surface antigens. Here are some commonly used methods for viral serotyping. Hemagglutination inhibition, HI, assay. This method is commonly used for serotyping influenza viruses. It involves mixing the viral sample with specific antibodies known as antisera and red blood cells. If the antibodies recognize and bind to the viral antigens, they prevent the attachment of the virus to the red blood cells, resulting in the inhibition of hemagglutination. The absence of agglutination indicates a positive serotype identification. Neutralization assay. In this method, the viral sample is mixed with specific neutralizing antibodies. The antibodies bind to the viral surface antigens and neutralize the infectivity of the virus. The ability of the antibodies to prevent viral infection in host cells indicates a positive serotype identification. Enzyme-linked immunosorbent assay, ELISA. ELISA can be used for viral serotyping by detecting specific viral antigens or antibodies. Different variations of ELISA, such as direct ELISA or indirect ELISA, can be employed to identify and quantify viral antigens or antibodies specific to different serotypes. Detection can be achieved through colorimetric, chemiluminescent, or fluorescent signals. Serological tests. Serological tests, including enzyme immunoassays, EIAs, and Western blotting, can be used to detect specific viral antibodies in patient samples. The presence of antibodies indicates exposure to or infection with a specific viral serotype. Genotyping. Some viral serotyping is accomplished through genetic analysis. This involves the amplification and sequencing of specific regions of the viral genome, such as the genes encoding surface antigens. By comparing the genetic sequences, scientists can determine the specific serotype or subtype of the virus. It is important to note that specific serotyping methods can vary depending on the virus of interest and its surface antigens. Some viruses may have unique serotyping techniques specific to their antigens or may require specialized assays. Viral serotyping is crucial for understanding viral epidemiology, tracking viral outbreaks, developing vaccines, and studying the antigenic diversity of viruses. It also aids in identifying circulating serotypes, monitoring changes in serotype prevalence, and guiding vaccine formulation to ensure protection against specific viral strains or serotypes. Why there is need of serotyping of microorganisms? Serotyping is essential in microbiology for several reasons which include Disease surveillance and epidemiology. Serotyping helps track the occurrence and spread of infectious diseases. By identifying and characterizing different serotypes of microorganisms, scientists can monitor outbreaks, determine the sources of infections, and understand the epidemiology of diseases. Vaccine development. Serotyping plays a critical role in vaccine development. By identifying the specific surface antigens of a pathogen, scientists can create vaccines that target those antigens. Vaccines designed to induce an immune response against specific serotypes or strains can provide protection against infection, prevent disease transmission, and reduce the burden of infectious diseases. Clinical Diagnosis and Treatment Serotyping is important in clinical settings for diagnosing and treating infectious diseases. Identifying the serotype of a pathogen causing an infection can help determine appropriate treatment strategies. Certain serotypes may be more virulent or resistant to specific antibiotics, and knowing the serotype can guide the choice of antibiotics and improve patient outcomes. Outbreak investigation and source tracing. When disease outbreaks occur, serotyping can help identify the source and track the transmission of the pathogen. By comparing the serotypes of isolates from different sources, investigators can determine the origin of contamination, whether it is from food, water, animals, or other reservoirs. Research and taxonomy. Serotyping aids in understanding the diversity, evolution, and relationships among different strains and species of microorganisms. By characterizing the antigenic variations, researchers can gain insights into the genetic diversity, phylogenetic relationships, and evolutionary patterns of microorganisms. In summary, serotyping is necessary for disease surveillance, vaccine development, clinical diagnosis, outbreak investigation, and research. It provides critical information about the antigenic properties and genetic diversity of microorganisms, enabling us to better understand, prevent, and control infectious diseases. Conclusion. Finally, serotyping helps researchers understand the evolutionary relationships between different strains of microorganisms. By studying the patterns of antigen variation, 
scientists can trace the emergence and spread of new strains and monitor their potential impact on human and animal health. We hope you enjoyed learning about this important technique. Don't forget to like this video and subscribe to our channel for more exciting microbiology content. Thanks for watching, and see you in the next video.